Syria's government turns to violence once again to quell anti-government protests. Snipers fired on people in the streets of Dara, where the uprising began more than a month ago. At least 34 people have been killed over the last two days. And human rights groups estimate more than 400 people have been killed since the crackdown, the crackdown started. Meanwhile, the White House continues a diplomatic solution to the conflict. We're pursuing a range of possible policy options, including targeted sanctions, to respond to the crackdown and make clear that this behavior by the Syrian government is unacceptable. Um, we strongly oppose the Syrian government's tr treatment of its citizens, and we continue to oppose its continued <laughs> destabilizing behavior, including support for terrorism and terrorist groups. For more now, we are joined from Washington by David Schenker. He is a senior fellow and director of the program on Arab politics for the Washington Institute. Thanks for being with us, David. My pleasure. Well, we didn't hear specifics from Washington. Are sanctions enough to get Syria to make concessions? No, I think Syria has proven uh, through the decades to, to be largely impervious to external pressures. They can feed their, themselves. Their economy isn't great, but they muddle by. Uh, you can uh, damage them to hurt them, uh, but this is not going to put them over the edge or to uh, compel the regime to commit suicide, essentially. So I, I think that they are largely symbolic, uh, but uh, not at all going to be decisive. So why won't the White House then call on Assad to step down? You know, I think that there is a long-standing fear in Washington, uh, and frankly throughout the Middle East and uh, among our European partners, of what comes next after Assad. Uh, will this be a uh, Sunni fundamentalist regime? Uh, will uh, there be an end to the type of religious tolerance uh, that has been uh, fostered by this regime, this minority regime? Um, Will there be uh, chaos? Will it become an al-Qaeda state? Nobody knows what will fill the void. This is a regime that's been in place for nearly 50 years. Uh, so uh, there's a hesitancy to get rid of him, uh, although one has to look at what, what the nature of this regime has been. I mean, it has been uh, destabilizing. It has been a terrorist-supporting regime uh, that has, you know, uh, sent weapons to Hezbollah and Hamas destabilized uh, the entire region and is the strategic ally of, uh, for the past 30 years of Iran. Uh, so uh, the Assad regime is really no prize in and of itself. Well, the U.N. Security Council will be holding a meeting on Syria today. So is it possible that we see the U.N. take increased measures to protect civilians like it did in Libya? I don't think you're going to be able to find that same type of consensus, regrettably. Uh, Syria and the Assad regime has managed to keep one foot throughout the years in this axis of resistance, uh, the support for terrorism, uh, alliance with Iran, and at the same time uh, to have uh, acceptability in Europe, to, uh, to have Assad go to Paris and stroll the avenues, his wife being photographed in Vogue magazine. Uh, he has managed to do this, and I think he has a lot of support and friends uh, among them. China and Russia. Uh, we're going to have a hard time, for example, in the Security Council getting the same type of support we got from Lebanon uh, that we did uh, certainly on Libya. I think uh, it's a more uh, divisive issue that we're unlikely to get international consensus about, certainly uh, regarding uh, m any military action. I want to switch gears now to Libya. This week, NATO bombed one of Gaddafi's compounds in Tripoli. And yesterday, Defense Secretary Robert Gates said this about the attack. Take a listen. Those centers are the ones that are commanding the forces that are uh, committing some of these uh, humanitarian um, uh, um, violations of uh, humanitarian uh, rights, uh, such as in Miserata. Uh, so we consider them legitimate targets. Uh, we are not uh, targeting him specifically. All right, so break this down. What does this mean? Does it mean that we're going to see intensified military pressure applied to Gaddafi? I think you're going to see intensified pressure on Gaddafi. I think you're going to see uh, intensified tactical operations. This is not going to be uh, just a no-fly zone. Uh, there is growing frustration among the, uh, the alliance, the NATO alliance, uh, about the stalemate on the ground and about the inability uh, thus far to actually protect uh, the citizens of places like Nasrata, where there has been essentially a massacre in recent weeks. Uh, and so, uh, you know, in this regard, I think we're going to really see uh, an op-tempo in the operations 
from the air and uh, you know and, and dip diplomatically uh, to keep a focus on this uh, you know this has been incredibly uh, divisive among the NATO partners there's a lot of sniping uh, among the partners well the United States is easing sanctions on Libya it's so that the rebels can actually sell oil and American companies can buy it do we know where that money is really going well, I assume that it's going to go to this transitional provisional authority, uh, which is the government in Benghazi. Uh, this authority, uh, we've met some of them. The, certainly the Qataris have recognized them diplomatically. The French have recognized them as a legitimate government of Libya. Uh, we've had diplomatic uh, ties with them. Secretary of State Clinton met with them. We know who the council is, or many of the members of the council are. Uh, what we don't know, though, is what they're going to do with the money and what the future government of Libya will look like. Um, we hope for the best, uh, but we know that there, are, there is, uh, for example, a, a large al-Qaeda presence or certainly a historical al-Qaeda presence in Libya. Uh, there is the Libyan Islamic Fighting Group uh, that was uh, established in the 90s uh, that, uh, uh, in, the, in the east, in Serenaka, in the east of Libya. And uh, this group actually merged with al-Qaeda about a decade ago and Libya was the second leading source of insurgents who flew uh, into Syria and entered Iraq to kill Americans and destabilize Iraq. So there is this presence on the ground, and there are many jihadis who are now showing up and uh, taking part in the military operations against Gaddafi. Um, so there's uh, you know, a concern about if they have access to this kind of money, eventually what will become of it? Uh, you know, are, what will the unintended consequences, what could they be? Uh, in the meanwhile, though, the focus is really on Gaddafi, and this government is already signing contracts, not just with us. They signed a $300 million deal with the Qataris a few weeks ago. Hmm. All right, David Schenker from the Washington Institute. A lot of insight there. We thank you for being with us. Thank you. My pleasure.